So this is covering section 1510. We're going to look at the acid base properties of a salt. So what we're going to be looking at is um, solutions that don't have something that obviously has a proton in it. Okay, salts, just to remind ourselves what a salt is, is basically just an ionic compound. So we're looking at a metal plus a non-metal. Okay, or cation. Something positive plus something negative. Cation plus an anion. Because we'll we'll see some that are polyatomics. We are going to um, produce a salt when we do an acid-base neutralization reaction. So a salt is basically the product of a neutralization reaction. Which we've talked about before uh, in the very first um, quarter. So I'm sure you all remember it. A neutralization reaction is where we are going to take an acid Combine it with a base, and we will form water, which is neutral, hence the neutralization. And then we're going to be left with our salt. And the salt um, can be either. Acidic, basic, or neutral. So when we look at a neutralization reaction, okay, we're going to take an acid plus a base. One of these can't be water. It has to be something else because we're going to be forming water and our salt. So if we look at uh, neutral salts first, our neutral sal salts are going to come when we neutralize a strong acid with a strong base. So for our neutral salts, our cations come from a strong base. So basically that's something with hydroxide. And usually that's going to be something from group 1A or 2A. And that's except beryllium ion. The anion for our neutral salt is going to come from a strong acid. It's the conjugate base of a strong acid. So we have HCl as a strong acid, so we'd have the chloride ion for the anion. Nitric acid would give us the nitrate ion. Bromide ion. Um, sulfuric acid is a strong acid, uh, but HSO4- is not neutral. And that's because it itself is a weak acid, so it will donate that second proton. So if we look at an example of a neutral salt formed from a neutralization, if we took, say, we have a strong acid, so let's take HCl with the strong base, NaOH, 
we're going to form water and NaCl. So NaCl is our salt. To, in order to look and understand what, how and why this is a neutral salt, this is going to be in water, so it's going to dissociate into its two ions. So we have the sodium ion and the chloride ion. And since it's in water, let's force it to interact with water. Our sodium is going to displace uh, one of the hydrogens. It's a single displacement, so it's going to kick out an H+. We'll form NaOH and H+. Chloride ion is going to kick out OH-, minus. so we form HCl and OH-. Minus. But we know NaOH is a strong base. So in fact, this reaction arrow is incorrect. We won't ever form NaOH. This reaction is only going to go in the reverse direction. Okay, so uh, in other words, what happens is when we form NaCl, we're never going to go in this forward reaction. So H plus is not produced. If we're not producing H plus, can't be an acidic solution. For the chloride ion, we're saying that we hypothetically would form HCl, which is a strong acid. So same concept. That reaction actually happens in the reverse direction. So our OH- minus is not produced. So that solution is not basic because we're not producing any base. So NaCl is a neutral salt. If we look at an example of a basic salt, Basic salt is going to come from a weak acid and a strong base. So our cation, again, is going to usually be something from group 1A or 2A except beryllium. And our anion in this case is going to be the conjugate base of a weak acid. So we can look at an example. Let's take HF with NaOH to form H2O oops, and NaF. So sodium fluoride is our salt. We're looking at Na plus plus H2O. Again, form NaOH and H plus, but this doesn't happen. Reverse. So we're not producing H plus. What changes now is if we look at our fluoride ion. Our fluoride ion is going to displace the OH minus, so we'll end up with HF and OH minus. HF is a weak acid, which tells us that we are in equilibrium. So this then, uh, this reaction goes back and forth, which means we have produced some OH minus.
which means the concentration of OH minus increases. So our pH is going to increase because we're becoming more basic. Okay. So NAF is a basic salt. So a question we might ask ourselves is how basic? In other words, what is the pH? In order to solve that, what you're going to need to do is an ICE table for your equilibrium, right? Use your KB expression and value. And that will get you your concentration of OH minus, and you can then use that to calculate your pH. So in the, the case of this example here, we'd be looking at our KB expression is HF times the concentration of OH minus divided by F minus. And usually what you're going to remember, we talked about KBs are not usually given. So you'll have to look up KA for our acid, which is HF and then use your equation we talked about yesterday relating Ka and Kb together. So let's work through an example of this type of question trying to determine the pH of a salt solution. I'll do that in a separate video for you.